Somebody here this morning, you may say, I don't have any issues. But Pastor, all, I'm, all I want is just I have this loved one that is not feeling too well. And whatever affects this person affects me. And it can affect my schedule also. So I need that problem to be solved. For some other persons here today, you may say, look, I don't even know where this thing came from. They said it's hereditary and it's in the family lineage. Or, you know, my father had it and, you know, my brother had it. And now it's coming around and we need to deal with it. But you need to know where you are. I was preaching here on Wednesday as the opening of this series. And, you know, I challenge people here at Switch on Wednesday. You really need to know where you are. While I was growing up, for instance, I realized that there are certain ailments that were just within my family. So my dad was asthmatic. My dad was, was, was hypertensive. And he also had ulcer. All right? That's, that's, that's quite bad, you know? Too many packages in one. All right? So, and you know, I've, said, I've told my story many times. My dad had a lot of us. It was a polygamous setting. But out of, of about 20-something of us, about three of us had asthma from very young. Yeah, from very young age. Um, also, I was there, but not quite prevalent, you know, and all. But I realized one thing, that as a teenager... I started having symptoms of ulcer. My middle younger sister had, ulcer, I mean, had asthma for many years. She got healed a few years ago. I mean, she's also born again now, uh, filled with the Spirit of God and doing well as a believer. We all grew up as, as Muslims. But when I realized that that ulcer was coming around the corner, I had to consciously do something about it because I know uh, um, it's a familial spirit. Yeah. And that's what they call familial spirit. Something that is, that is familiar, that is in the family. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. That's how it works. Because you need to be familiar with something for you to visit. Strangers don't just walk in. Yeah. When Jesus said it's a familiar spirit, that's what, it's, it's a fa- it's spirit that knows the family. That's why you see things reoccurring. It's the operation of familiar spirit. Familiar is family. It's, we, we know each other. So I can visit. And during this series, then you need to talk to such things and tell them you can't visit. Because I'm in a new family. After the order of Jesus. I'm a child of Abraham. So I have my heartly family, but I have also have my spiritual family. And my spiritual family forbids an operation of a natural familiar spirit. Praise God. I said praise God. So I need to find yourself and know where you are when it comes to your health. So, so that as we dig into the word of God, look into God's divine provision for us to be alive and well, then you are able to lay hold on it and, you know, treat it with utmost importance. Praise God. I said praise God. Tell your neighbor for me again, say, I'm alive and well. And that's the will of God for me. Say it again, say, I'm alive and well. And that's the will of God for me. I found also that it can be a bit difficult for you to trust God for healing for many reasons. And people struggle with trusting God for healing for many reasons. What I'm sharing this morning will help you a little bit if you are in that class. Some people find it difficult, you know, to trust God for healing because you have many options. So medical science is quite prevalent. Now, I mean, we all talk about HMO and all that. And if you're in HMO business, you're in good business, really. Uh, uh, but because of all that, well, many options. Medical science that also advanced. And you see, we're going to deal with that as we go on, maybe on a Wednesday, this Wednesday we have a special event, a switch. Uh, we have a, a nutritionist and, you know, health, uh, health uh, expert, and we have a medical doctor. And we're going to be looking into uh, um, dealing with external stressors and stuff like that, and where medical science and, uh, and um, the word of God, where they meet, because they actually sh- shake hands somewhere along the line. line. Uh, because some people actually think that um, one is an option for the other. No. The Bible says there's no knowledge that has been released that is not from God. The secret things belong to God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and our children. And science about discovery, about revelation. I hope you are still with me. It's about research. You know, and God releases it per time. Because no man can know anything except God releases it. I hope you are still with me today. 
So we're going to be dealing with that a little bit, but I just, I just wanted to know that there's, there's a place where those things meet, and we shouldn't overlook the place of healing, divine health and healing, because we have many options. Some people feel healing is hard work. I mean, why should I trust God to heal a dick when I can take Pastor One is easier, all right? But you want to wait until Pastor doesn't work? I don't know if you're getting me. Yeah, because if you continue on that you know, trail of thought, then some depressamon will not work. Is that when you don't want to remember that you have opportunity for healing in the world? Some people think that healing is for special people, people with special faith. You know, Jesus said, if you have faith like a monster seed, you'll say to this mountain, we move from here and cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, you will have what you believe. So some people believe that healing is for special people some kind of special people who have special faith. And I beg to disagree with you today. I'm going to unpack that uh, very soon. Uh, we, uh, some people say we, we know that God can do it, but will he do it? And how soon will he do it? Will he do it? And how soon will he do it? I don't know where your faith is right now. Vacillating between all this. For some people, healing is not the default mentality. It's not. Your default mentality is doctor, hospital, you know, and all that, which is not bad. Don't, 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 I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. That is not bad in itself. All we're saying is that before you think doctor, have you said a prayer? Have you said a prayer? Have you considered, look, look at, uh, 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 just for a mention, the, 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 the woman with the issue of blood, for instance, look at 10 verse 43 to 48. The Bible told that story. The Bible says he had suffered many things from the hands of many physicians. And then afterwards, when all didn't work, he said, let's try God. We don't try God. The just shall live by faith. I'm just throwing all these things up so that you find where you are. We don't try God. The just shall live by faith. We live in him. In him we live, we move, and have our being. That's what the scripture says. So we don't try God. Bible says she has suffered many things from the hands of many physicians and she was spent. Have you read that in your Bible before? Luke chapter 8. She was spent, completely spent. Then the idea of Jesus was in town. Let's try him too. And that's the approach that some of us still have. When everything has failed to work, then maybe we'll remember God. And where has God been all this while? That's the issue. That's the issue. Some people even think that healing is for poor people. That if you are blessed enough, you shouldn't think about healing. So just sort yourself out, you know. You can afford it. And you know there are some hospitals in Lagos that, in fact, now hospital is also a status symbol. Yeah. A certain kind of hospital must not catch you there. If it catch you there, that means you're a poor man. Praise God. No, it's true. Is that not what it, what's happening? Yeah. Because some people just believe that, oh, trusting God for healing is for poor people. If you, if you have money, you sort yourself out. But may God never allow the devil to take you to the point where money will not do anything. Uh, can I, I, I need to get a better amen to that prayer. May the devil never be able to touch you to the point that money will not be able to solve the problem. Or medical science will say we have come to an end in ourselves. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. What does Jesus have to say about healing? I've said all that for you to locate where you are in the scheme of things. Because you need to know where you are for you to make remarkable progress. What does Jesus have to say about healing? Um, I'll read Matthew, from Matthew 15. And I need you to join me there. Matthew 15. I'll read from verse 21. Matthew 15 from verse 21. You do well to join me there. If you don't have a Bible in church, please create the habit of bringing a Bible to church. We we'll display scriptures on the screen just to aid assimilation and um, also to shorten time. So you can read from the screen, but have your own Bible and make sure you always read your Bible. Matthew chapter 15, I read from verse 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And um, behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely 
demon possessed. Verse 23, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and argued, uh, sorry, and urged him, saying, send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25, then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Help me. Verse 26, but he said, but he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Look at what the woman said, verse 27. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 28 and the last verse here. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And a daughter was healed from that very hour. The Lord blessed the reading of his word. I said, the Lord blessed the reading of his word. From this encounter of this woman of Canaan, uh, some other uh, part of the gospel, Mark chapter 7, uh, she was called the Syrophoenician woman. But, but whatever uh, way it was rendered, it's to the end that we understand that this woman uh, was by no means a Jew. By no means a Jew. The Bible says a Greek woman, a Syrophoenician woman, in Mark chapter 7, he, had, he said a woman of Canaan. She lived in Canaan, by no way a Jew. This woman came and asked Jesus to heal her daughter. And from that conversation, we are able to understand a few things about healing. This is quite foundational. I need you to uh, get it right into your heart and let it remain so that you can you know, meditate on this and really understand it's very, very foundational to healing, what we're teaching this morning. Jesus looked at her and said, I'm not sent, but to the lost people of the house, household of Israel. So, and nobody will take what belongs to children. Children's bread and give it to dogs. By the way, back in the day, uh, um, those people who are not Jews sometimes are, were regarded in a very derogatory manner, uh, were called dogs, as in just being ordinary or you know, that's, that, that was how they were treated. That was why, you know, you remember the story of the woman at the well uh, uh, and Jesus, I think John chapter 4, G Jesus was talking to, to her, the woman of Samaria, and it was unexpected. The woman was telling Jesus, how come you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, to give you water? We don't have social connections with Jews because, you know, they were regarded to be yeah, that was why the story of the Good Samaritan uh, became very popular because a, a Samaritan was not expected to do what a Jew should do. <laughs> I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So the, it's still that same kind of scenario here. This woman came and Jesus was trying to establish a point here. You know what? First and foremost, you need to understand one thing, and that's that healing belongs to children. Healing is children's bread. And I love to unpack those two things. Children, bread. Children, bread. Healing is children's bread. Healing belongs to children. That was what Jesus told this woman in Mark 15, 26 there. Healing belongs to children. Healing belongs to children. There are certain provisions that... We make. And when we make those provisions, we have family in mind. When Christ was sent, he was sent primarily to the lordship of the household of Israel. And according to Galatians 3, verse 13, the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, uh, 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 having, you know, become a cause for us, for it is written, because everyone that hung on the tree said that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. After the death and resurrection of Christ, we all, as many as receive him, the Bible says as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. We then become children of Abraham by implication 
Jews. Albeit not natural, because we were grafted in, the Bible says. We became adopted in the beloved. Are, are you still with me today? Yeah. So, in the Old Testament, if you are not a Jew, primarily Christ was not sent to you. So he said, you can't give what belongs to children to dogs. And the woman said, you know what? Bread is bread. Big loaf or crumbs. So the dogs can get crumbs. And if crumb will still rega be regarded as bread, then I still qualify. You call me dog, I don't mind. And faith was dogged. Call me whatever. I need healing for my daughter. <laughs> you can call me any name you like. Call me a dog. Call me a ram. Or rabbit. But I came for healing. And in as much as you know that after children have eaten, crumbs still fall down. And the person in the house can take that. I'm I, that's enough. Jesus said, oh woman, how, I mean, what kind of faith is this? And he said, you have what you desire. But where I'm going is that all that struggle was not supposed to be part of the life of a believer for healing. All that begging and shoving and, you know, and entreating, no, was not supposed to be part of it. If we're truly in Christ, if we're truly in Christ, and we have been redeemed, and in Christ, then, that begging and, you know, all those mindsets that I described earlier on about our approach to healing, healing is for people of big faith, healing is for, you know, this healing is difficult. It's not supposed to be. This woman came with her mind made up that she was going to get healing, but she knew she had to go through the motion of, you know, appealing and before Jesus would say, okay, have it. And she got it. But Jesus said, for you and I, if you are in Christ, if you are born of the Spirit, if your life is fully committed to Christ and you are a child of Abraham through Jesus Christ, then all that drama shouldn't be part of how we get our own healing. Because healing belongs to the children. Healing belongs to children. I was um, visiting a friend, a long-time friend, a while ago, a few weeks ago, actually, during the elections. And then she, he, I was just asking after his daughters, oh, they're big girls now. Oh, they called them down and, you know, uh, they came to greet me. And one was just, just entered secondary school. The other one, uh, um, I think about age nine or ten, just gisting. And then himself and his wife started gisting me about some of the things happening in their house. And this, uh, this story will interest you. They got a new maid who will come in the morning and then stay till about 7 p.m. when they will be back from work and take care of the kids and all. When this maid resumed work, the girls got back from school. School boss dropped them and, you know, they just went into the kitchen. Boom, boom, boom. Open the fridge. Carry, you know, Coke, you know, soda. Just pick stuff and poof, they opened and they were drinking. The woman went ballistic because where she came from, Your level of access shouldn't be... I mean, a child should not open the fridge and pick whatever she wanted. You, you understand what I'm saying? Just pick, picking whatever you want. And then, even if you want to try it, you should share one. <laughs> and I don't know how you grew up, but for some of us, growing up, Coca-Cola was delicacy. You take it on Christmas Day, I mean... Uh, because I grew up a Muslim, you know, we didn't used to celebrate Christmas, but, you know, either Kabir, you know, all those, you know, or when there's a big party in the family, maybe grandma passed, and um, there's a big party. <laughs> you know, that's when you drink as you like. Some, sometimes you get to drink, you understand what I'm saying? But when you, my wife was saying that on Christmas Day in our house, they used to do competition. How many bottles did you take? Eight, seven, nine. That's growing up because they just everything will be let loose. They don't count on Christmas Day. You just you just take anyhow. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uh, but that's the mindset Jesus was giving about healing and the children of God. This woman, my friends, made went ballistic, collected everything, and told them, that, literally telling them they were nowhere brought up. <laughs> ah, the, how old are you? How old are you? And then the parents go back from work, and then she was about to leave, and she was reporting the case. I seized the coke. He's here. 
She thought she had done a good job. Because <laughs> they say, small, small girls, just coming back from school, just open fridge. And how would they be just be opening the fridge anyhow? And just take, take, take whatever they want from the refrigerator. You know, my friend said they had a good laugh. <laughs> they had a good laugh. And, you know, they were just, but they could empathize with her. They could empathize with her. You know, some of us, when we think about how we grew up, we draw boundaries for our children. And some of them are unnecessary. Because it's not their fault that you gave out to them. <laughs> and that you are blessed. <laughs> it's not their fault. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? It's not their fault. It's not their fault that you grew up in the village. <laughs> it's not their fault. <laughs> and it's nobody's fault. It's just like the man that they said was born blind and they came to meet Jesus. Whose fault? Is it him or his prayer? How can it be his fault? <laughs> can somebody have committed a sin in the womb? <laughs> Was he kicking his mother or something? And God said, take his sight. <laughs> but I don't understand. It was a very silly question. Jesus looked at them. You people are, you know, something is wrong with you. How can, how can it be his fault? You know? And Jesus says, nobody's fault. It's for the glory of God to be manif made manifest. And then he healed the guy. It may just be for that one reason, that just to show the power of God. Are you still with me today? So, it's not your children's fault if you were a bit deprived when you were come, growing up. So don't draw unnecessary boundaries. There should be boundaries, but let it not be something very tight, like you can't drink soda at all. So my friend said, you know, so from that story, I got the understanding that if you are a child, you have access, access, access. I was discussing... Uh, uh, this with uh, PT during the weekend. You know, we're talking about how sometimes our children have unfettered access to our room. Sometimes. And then he said, uh, that's when they're even growing up. He said, uh, uh, his daughter, Ari, who is just um, a little over two, is not unfettered access. She sleeps in the room. <laughs> and she sa he said sometimes, maybe she's, she's sleeping somewhere in the room and they, they were talking, and she would tell them, shh, I want to sleep. <laughs> that's mega access <laughs> you are disturbing somebody you have to take it down <laughs> praise God I said praise God children what they connote is access 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 if you forget everything I'm saying today don't forget I have access to certain things from God one of them is healing because I'm his child. Are you still with me today? Jesus said healing is for children and it's children's bread. Healing is for children. I need to understand that for myself. That healing is not special, a special thing. I have access to it. Healing, second, secondly, is not a treat. It's bread. Bread is staple food. It forms the basis of um, many meals. You, you don't go to a restaurant, good restaurant, and be ordering bread. If it's a very good restaurant, they will give you for free. Many good restaurants, I mean, all around the world, you enter as you're sitting down and you're placing your order, they will serve you bread. Am I saying the truth? Yeah, just to, to get your appetite up a little bit. Bread and, and, and soup or something. Just Bread is just... And you remember in the days of Jesus, bread was so commonplace. In the wilderness, when he was about to feed 5,000, 3,000, he asked them, where can we get food to feed these people? Eh, there's no food anywhere. But one small boy had uh, uh, three loaves. That was how common bread was. Why didn't they say one small boy had cucumber? No. Bread was everywhere. I, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. One small boy had three loaves, and they bring the three loaves, blessed it and broke it, and that was it. It was just common, staple food. So healing is supposed to be common. Healing is not a special treat for special people. By no means. Bread is staple meal for everyone and every day. Staple food for everyone every day. If you live in Lagos here, 
You know, there's a particular bread that they name after a, a part of Lagos. Yeah, the people here, you know, understand what I'm saying. If I wasn't on the internet, you may not. Yeah. That's how, I mean, how common, yeah. How many other kind of food do you name after areas? Yeah. Why don't we have yaba rice? <laughs> Praise God. But, but bread is just that common, even in this current time. But I'm even letting you know that in Jesus' time, it was even more common than this, more commonplace than what we have today. And that's how Jesus described healing. Healing is children's bread. It's not children's gold. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It's not children's silver. Healing is children's bread. It's for children, so it talks about access. It's supposed to be common, so it's just bread. Somebody say after me, say, I have access to divine health. Because I'm a child of God, I have access. Access. And it's supposed to flow to me so easily. So easily. I am part of the family. First John chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says, you have God, little children, and you have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have God, little children. You are family. You are family. 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 God wants us to be alive and well. Third John 2 says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I wish that you prosper and be in health. Health is part of the package. The writer of the book of Third John was saying, look, this is, this is utmost priority. I wish above all things that you prosper and you be in health as your soul prospers. And when you read Luke 13 verse 16, talking about the woman who was bent over backward. Look at what, what, what Jesus said there. He said, then should not this woman, King James says, ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on a Sabbath day. He was arguing, you know, they were arguing with him about healing on Sabbath day and all that. Healing should be commonplace. Jesus was saying, you know what? Man was not create, created for the Sabbath. Sabbath was created for man to rest. And said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, ought not, shouldn't it be? Because this thing is supposed to be based on access and it's commonplace. So Sabbath or no Sabbath, Sabbath my foot. This woman is a daughter of Abraham. She is supposed to be healed. And Sabbath will not stop it. So when it comes to healing, God wants to break protocols. For my sake and for your sake. We just need to understand it that it's not supposed to be that difficult. And that God is even willing to break protocols for our sake. Somebody needs to leave this place this morning and meet someone, maybe a loved one, who is, you know, sick or something, and tell and let them know that God wants to break protocol because of you. He's, he wants to heal you. He wants to take this infirmity away. And your faith must be up. Because God's will for you is that you'll be alive and well. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Let me drop a few hints as I wrap, wrap this up this morning. This, just if one, two starting points. Where do I start when it comes to get, getting healed? Or getting my healing, receiving my healing? Where do I start from? Where do I start from? Can I encourage somebody here this morning? After you've gotten the understanding that all we're contending with is our understanding with access and the fact that this is not a special treat and I don't have to be a spiritual juggernaut to be healed. Then you need to understand this as a starting point. You need to build your faith through God's word. You need to build your faith through God's word. Because you always need to start somewhere. You start somewhere. Faith comes by hearing. Romans, you know, chapter 10, verse 17 says, and hearing by the word. I cannot keep hearing that this sickness has killed somebody, has killed another person, uh, someone has run mad, you know, all that. And that's all I'm hearing. I 
as much as God is eager to heal me, the healing may not come. Because my mind is filled with doubt and fear and all sorts of things. Instead of it being filled with the word of God. Are you still with me today? And the Bible says faith comes by hearing. So if faith comes, that means faith also goes. There's nothing like permanent faith. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It has the capacity to escape. If faith comes, faith goes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith goes through fear and doubt and hearing evil reports. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Whatever is not from the heart of God will take faith away from your heart. Are you still with me today? And also faith is like, like, like a muscle. You know, it needs to be exercised. Needs to be exercised. Needs to be exercised. If you don't work on it, it won't work well. I remember a story my, my wife told, I think in the first service. She was preaching first service this morning. And you know, she, she told this story that when she started a, a banking career many years ago, she... She was posted to a branch. And um, they, they, when she got there, it just so happened that the first, I think the first day or so, she, she met some of the colleagues talking and talking about the branch manager. And they were actually abusing him. That this man came a few weeks ago and all, he was terrorizing all of us. I'm healed in Jesus' name. By stripes, I'm healed. And he was just boasting around and, you know, bouncing everywhere. And then he came, and then a few days later, he took some days off because he was not feeling too well. And then he resumed that same day and was taking his medication. Some of them were looking at him from the cubicle. And, eh, see, see, see his head. I'm healed. I'm there. Oh, see, see, see. She said she couldn't summon the courage to talk to the boss because she was just resuming there. But she called, she, she spoke to two or three of her colleagues that were there and said, look, Stay there. Are you Christian? Say yes. The man is building his faith gradually. It may not work for him last week, but it will start to work because he's trying his muscle. You be abusing him. The day sickness comes, what will you say? Eh? Have you even tried to believe God for your own healing? You are making fun of somebody who is trying. Because faith is like muscle. You have to keep Walk in it. <laughs> I hope you are still with me. Yeah. And like Pastor T was saying in the last service, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be trying to... <laughs> how do I put this now? You cannot release your faith for headache. Then the day they say you need a blood transfusion, you say, hey, Jesus, you have to do this one. You have not released your faith for him to do headache. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Because this thing is in progression. If every time you experience a headache, you pop paracetamol and boom, they are gone. Because you, you know you need the head fast to be back in order, right? <laughs> and you don't have time. <laughs> you just pop paracetamol and go. If you, if you pop that, eh, because you, you don't want to, you, you feel it's tedious to want to trust God, and don't, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't take medicine. I'm only saying that you need to work on your... It, it, let, me, let me say this. There's a, there's a difference between trusting God for healing and just, just taking medicine because your faith is in drugs. I would rather you, at your level of faith, you pray and then you take the drug. And you tell yourself, whether drug or anything, God, just heal me. All I want is healing. Then, for you not to have God in your consciousness when it comes to healing, and you said you are a child of God, and all you do is to swallow drugs. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Because you need to start from somewhere in the operations of your faith. I rather pray and then take the drug. Knowing and telling God, God, my faith is not in this drug. I'm obeying the doctor so it doesn't look like I'm stupid. So I'm taking it. But I'm believing you that anyhow, I'm healed. And I want to get to the point where my faith is strong enough 
I feel the symptoms, and I don't even have to take this. That's a progression. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because if your faith cannot heal a headache, that faith will probably not be able to heal asthma. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just like uh, somebody, I mean, when, when, when we talk to singles, you don't have faith for yourself. You want to hurt somebody else. Are the brothers hearing me? You don't have faith to sort yourself out and pay all your bills before the end of the month. And then you want to add somebody's bill to it. You're creating a problem. Build your faith as a single person so you can pay all your bills and have room and then bring somebody into that room. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Less your wife will be praying dangerous prayers for you that you got married. Prayers like, Lord, I really am in doubt whether you led me into this. But I'm in it. So whatever you need to do to this young man, do it. Let his head be correct. Let, you know, because this school fees, he must pay it. I've been paying it to this day. <laughs> Some people say, this is the fourth time. And some ladies tell God, Lord, I'm not talking now, but if this thing delay, I'll talk. <laughs> After I paid the third time, if, you know, Lord, I paid this house rent, this is the second, third time I will talk. And I can say anything, and you must not talk. <laughs> yes, because I've tried. That's how some people pray. Just telling God, you know, this fourth one, I have the right to talk, and I will talk. And whatever I say, blood must cover it. <laughs> you say your mind. That's what happens when you refuse to build your faith before you get into bigger things in life. And you have to, you know, continue to build your faith gradually. Secondly, and um, the last thing for today, is that you need to have this mindset that I am not the sick trying to get healed. I have been created to be whole and healthy and the devil is trying to steal my health. Those are two different things. In fact, they are miles apart. Because some people think that we are just beggarly elements, you know, trying to be restored. No. God created me whole. I'm supposed to be alive and well. John chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. His will is life and life in abundance. The enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. What has he come to steal? He wants to steal my health and your health. He wants to steal my joy. He wants to steal my peace. He wants to steal my health. So I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the blessed of the Lord. I'm the healed. I'm the healthy. That the enemy is trying to steal my health. And I must put him where he belongs. Say amen somebody. Amen. Or say better amen somebody. Amen. I must stand my ground. I must lay hold on what I believe. And stay there. And keep declaring to the devil. You can't have this. You can't touch this. Are you still with me today? I said are you still with me today? So I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I am the blessed, the healed, the healthy person that God created. And no devil is going to put anything that God has not put in me. Yeah, Exodus chapter 23 verse uh, uh, 20 or so, the Bible says that none of the uh, diseases of, of the Egyptians will be able to find a way into your body. It said you serve the Lord your God, he, he, he will bless your bread and your water and take sickness away from the midst of you. And he said none shall, 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 shall suffer miscarriage. Nor shall carry their young. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. Proverbs to the 4, verse, to, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your head to my saying. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22 says, For their life to them that find, find it, and health to all their flesh. The word of God is health to all of our flesh. And Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. It says, Who has believed our report? Unto whom the hand of God has come. 
You believe the report of the Lord, you see the hand of God. You doubt the report of the Lord, you don't see the hand of God. Can you hear me touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Or say it with conviction, say I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Or let's say it one more time, say I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. So say I believe that I have access to healing because I'm part of the family. Say I'm a child of God through the blood of Jesus after the order of Abraham. So I am blessed with strength, with vitality. Say sickness and diseases don't have a place in my life, in my body. Say I've been made whole. Spirit, soul, and body. So I say I don't suffer emotional illness. No mental illness. No physical illness. Because the hand of God is upon my life. Say I'm blessed beyond the curse. I am not the sick trying to be healed. God created me healthy and whole. Say every part of my body functions properly. In the name of Jesus. Say no disease. No sickness. We find a resting place in my life. Say with long life. God will satisfy me and show me his salvation. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Isaiah prophesying Isaiah 53. He said, talking about Jesus, he was a man of grief. You know, and all that. He said he was wounded for transgression. From verse 4. Bruised for iniquity. He said the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He said by his stripes. I think verse 6 of Isaiah 53. We were. By, by his stripes we are healed. And then in First Peter chapter 2. When you read verse 24. Peter was referring to that prophecy of Isaiah. That was maybe more than a hundred years before Jesus came. And Peter referred to it. Because Christ has now come to fulfill that prophecy. Referred to it in past tense. So in verse 24 of 1 Peter chapter 2. He said, and by stripes we were healed. So if we have been healed. We are healed forever. Healed. Not going to be healed. We were healed. Somebody say after me today. Say I'm healed. healed. Of every human. In the name of Jesus. Say, nothing will stop me from fulfilling destiny. Sickness will not stop me. Weakness will not stop me. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I speak to every organ in my body. Receive the life of God. In the name of Jesus. Receive the life of God. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, you, you, nothing may be wrong with you. You may have someone, a loved one, maybe at home in another city or anywhere who's struggling with something. I want us to begin to speak right now. Speak to organs. Speak to parts of your body. Speak to the loved one, wherever they may be. I want you to begin to speak life right now. Begin to speak life right now. Nothing will stop me from fulfilling destiny. I must fulfill my destiny. I must fulfill my destiny. Somebody needs to speak to something that is familiar. Something that is in the family. Maybe you are seeing traces of it already. You need to speak against that asthma. Speak against that, that leukemia. Speak against that high sickness. That disease in the eye. Speak against it. Speak against cataracts. Speak against